I was shocked when I heard that fur farms still exist. I thought they had been banned many years ago, and in some countries, such as the UK, that is the case. But they still exist in many other countries. They exist to provide fur for the fashion industry. Each year, around 100 million animals are bred and killed for fur coats, trimmed for hooded jackets, and pom-poms on hats, gloves and shoes. Mink are not the only animals bred for slaughter. Fox, chinchilla and raccoon dogs are also farmed. Fur farming is banned in the UK, Austria, Germany, the Czech Republic and Belgium. In Switzerland, the regulations for fur farming are so strict that there are no fur farms. However, there are still an estimated 2,750 mink farms in Europe that produce more than 27 million pelts per year. But the tide is turning. It is to be banned in the Netherlands in 2021 and in France and Norway in 2025. Poland is waiting on a vote from the Senate with the hope that it will be banned within the year. However, there are at least 245 mink farms in the US, 200 in Canada, and China breeds and kills more than 50 million animals a year. There are two species of mink, the American and the European, and belong to the family Mustelidae, as do weasels, otters and ferrets. They are semi-aquatic and are seldom found away from riverbanks, lakes or marshes. They are carnivorous and prey on fish and other aquatic life, small mammals, birds and eggs. Conditions for mink on fur farms is appalling. To maximise profit, their cages are so small that they can only take a few steps in any direction, with no sign of any water for their semi-aquatic lifestyle. The rows of cages are kept in dark, dirty barns or sheds, and they may be kept outside with no shelter from the elements. They are fed on meat byproducts that are considered unfit for human consumption. Under these caged conditions, with no chance to follow their natural instincts, many mink go around in circles or pace their cages, even self-mutilate, biting their own skin, feet and tails, and there have also been reports of cannibalisation of their cage mates. Parasitic infections and disease are known to spread readily under these conditions. For example, illusion disease, which is a type of parvovirus, is prevalent in mink farms to the point where in some regions it is becoming a limiting factor in the industry's ability to produce mink. And farm mink do not exhibit a great deal of genetic diversity, which can also favour infectious disease transmission and susceptibility. To date, Denmark, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, Italy and the United States have reported cases of coronavirus on their mink farms. Coronavirus was first diagnosed on a mink farm in the Netherlands on April the 23rd, closely followed by another on the 25th of April. Tests were carried out on the farm workers, their relatives and close contacts, and 68% of them were found to be infected with coronavirus. It has been established that the mink had caught the virus from infected farm workers and then had spilled back the infection into the community. During the passage through the mink, the virus has accumulated mutations and most farms in the Netherlands have developed a farm-specific genomic signature which confirmed that the people on the farm were infected by the virus from the animals and not from other humans. What was of particular concern is that the mutations were found on the spike protein gene. This spike protein, which is found on the surface of the viral membrane, is what binds to the human cell receptor. The viral membranes then fuse with the human cell membrane which allows the genome of the virus to enter human cells and infect them. Because of its importance in the mechanism of infecting human cells, the spike protein has been a key target for vaccines and therapeutic antibodies. And any mutation could undermine the effectiveness of the vaccines. It is also a major concern that a non-human reservoir of the virus could develop from where the virus could be reintroduced once circulation of COVID in humans is suppressed or even stopped. This was the main reason for Denmark and the Netherlands carrying out culling of millions of mink on their farms. The Netherlands commenced the culling of 1 million mink in July and Denmark culled 17 million mink in November. Spain has also seen mink infected and in July nearly 100,000 mink were culled at a farm in Spain after over three quarters of the animals tested positive for coronavirus. The Republic of Ireland has three mink farms which are also going to cull their mink in spite of no COVID infections on these farms. 
Farmers in the US have also seen infections in their mink. For example, in Utah, nine of the state's 36 mink farms have had to be quarantined and at least 8,000 minks have died of infection. The infection has been found to be deadlier among the older breeding stock of mink, killing more than 40%, whilst in younger mink the death rate has been lower. There are no plans to cull mink in the US, or to put an end to mink farms at all. In Canada, as of November, no mink had contracted COVID-19. They were continuing to operate with heightened biosecurity measures, such as staff wearing face masks and gloves, and increased hand washing. With the demise of Denmark's mink farms, China has now become the biggest producers of mink fur. I can't find out any information on whether there have been outbreaks of COVID-19 in Chinese mink farms. Only that, unlike many other aspects of life in China, where there has been a zero tolerance approach to new infection risks, there has been little action against mink farms. In fact, the farmers are looking forward to a boost in trade as demand for fur exceeds the supply, as do the farms in Canada and the US. So how do you go about the grisly task of culling millions of mink? Mink are normally euthanized with gas, such as carbon monoxide, which doesn't harm the pelt. They are placed in a mobile unit, which includes a specially designed airtight container, which is pre-filled with the gas. Having the mobile unit brought to the cage reduces the stress caused by transporting the mink long distances. The carbon monoxide should make the animal unconscious in 30 seconds and die quickly and humanely, but there is controversy in the use of this method on mink. As being semi-aquatic, they can hold their breaths a long time. There have been unsubstantiated reports of mink waking up whilst being skinned. When Denmark culled its 17 million mink, they probably euthanised them with carbon monoxide, as leaving the skins unbroken also avoids releasing contaminated body fluids into the environment. To help with the culling and disposal of the bodies, the army, police and home guard were brought in. The bodies were buried in trenches in West Jutland at a military training field. They were disinfected and covered in lime before being covered in the sandy soil. The problem that has now occurred is that because the mink are only buried one metre deep and the sandy soil is so light, the bodies of the decaying mink have come to the surface. As the bodies decay, gases have formed, which is a natural phenomenon, but in this situation it has caused the bodies to rise to the surface. Police have had to shovel extra soil on top of the bodies in an effort to stop the bodies emerging. There is also concern that the bodies may have been buried too close to the lakes and underground water reserves and may contaminate ground and drinking water. However, it is believed that there is only a small risk to humans from the decomposing bodies, as the virus is transmitted by live animals exhaling the virus into the air. The fact that, at least in Europe, mink farms are having to be shut down is a good thing, and in some countries, the pandemic has brought about the closure of this barbaric trade sooner than planned. It has also highlighted the problems caused by us humans keeping animals in such unnatural and close confinement. I hope that, as a species, we can learn from this and that there will come a time very soon when the farms in countries such as the US, Canada and China will also have to close and so end this appalling process which is only there to provide fur for the fashion trade.